everyone um so this week we're changing gears a little bit and we're just going to go back to learning about how to solve missing pieces of triangles um and so uh this week we're going to learn about this thing called law of signs um and law of signs is used to find missing sides and angles in a triangle that's a non-right triangle so law of signs is used in non-right triangles so it's all about non-right triangles um, for this week and next week. So this week I'm going to teach you guys about this thing called Law of Sines. And then next week we're going to talk about Law of Cosines. And so, um, and that'll be our school year. So um, Law of Sines is a proportion formula used to find missing sides and angles in um, non-right triangles. And it looks like the following. I'm going to write it over here. So sign A over A equals sine b over b equals sine c over c. And these proportions come from this image. So one thing to note real quick, lowercase letters represent sides, uppercase represents angles. So, um, when triangles are labeled, uppercase letters always represent angles. Lowercase letters always represent sides. Um, and so I try to draw that nicely here for you guys. And so referring to the formula, sine capital A over A. So this is sine of a side length. Or sorry, angle. Oh my gosh. Sine of an angle. Are you doing well, guys? Is my white out going to work? Sine of an angle over a side length. Um, and so then that's the same for each piece. And so where this comes from is it's actually, um, if you turn your triangle, um, you can turn any non-right triangle into a right, into two right triangles by putting it on its base flat, which I'm trying to see in the video. So this looks flat right now, right? You can turn it into two right triangles by drawing a line down the middle. And my pen's dying. So this turns into two right triangles. So here there's a right angle, here there's a right angle. And the way sine works is, you know, if this is your angle, sine is, um, this would be your opposite over your hypotenuse. This side would be your opposite over your hypotenuse. Um, and so your side lengths actually become proportional. Um, with cutting this triangle into two right triangles, there's actually a proportionality that occurs here, and there's a proof for this that hopefully you guys maybe learned in geometry. Um, but they're proportional, and so we are able to use this, this cool formula because of that proportionality of the two right triangles to solve for missing sides and angles in non-right triangles. So really, the trick is um, technically... Um, it's being turned into two right triangles so that we can get these proportions out of it, but we don't actually have to do that math. Um, but I just want to tell you guys a little bit where this formula comes from. Um, and so the way it works is, um, we typically just take two of these at a time. So let's say that we know some stuff about A and B, but we're missing one thing. We'll use the A and B part, or we could do the B and C part, or we could do A and C. Um, we're only ever going to set equal to one thing at a time, but I just want to show you guys that you can set up any pair proportionally. So um, let's try some of these. Um, there's a couple cases. So case one, um, mm, I'll draw it like right in here. So case one is that you have two angles on one side, two angles, one side. So if you have, oh, you guys can't even see. So if you have two angles in one side given to you, um, the first trick is going to be find the third angle. Find third angle. And then step three is then you're gonna, um, you're gonna end up solving for a side. Solve for side. And that's if you are starting out with two angles in one side. Or if your first step is you start out with one angle and two sides, if you start with one angle and two sides, you then have to find a missing angle. So depending on which case you're in, you're either going to start by solving for a side or solving for an angle. Um, 
And so what we're going to do with our triangles is we're going to find every side and every angle. But sometimes that first thing that you have to solve for is different depending on what case you're in. Um, what else did I want to tell you guys? Oh, the total amount of uh, the total angle inside a triangle. So all angles. Let's see. Uh, I didn't leave myself enough room up here for notes. Angles. In any triangle, add up to 180 degrees. So if I had you guys for geometry, this is the triangle sum theorem. This is the triangle sum theorem. All angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So if we have a missing angle, we're going to do 180 minus the other two added together. And so you guys should have done this a good bit in geometry, but like, you know, it's been a while. All right, so I think that's everything I need to teach you guys to preface these problems. So first up, this first example, um, we have two angles and one side. So we're in this case, two angles and one side. So the first thing I'm gonna do is find that third angle. So we're missing angle T here. So we have S, we have R, we're missing T. So this goes back to the triangle sum theorem. All angles in a triangle add up to 180. So angle T, is equal to 180 minus 40 minus 49. So grab your calculator. 180 minus 40 minus 49 is 91. So this is 91 degrees. All right, Um. so honestly, like we're pretty much done. Now we just have to solve for two missing side lengths. And that's where actually using this law of sines proportion is gonna help us. Um. So the first thing that we have to do using law of sines is we have to find a proportion that we can fill both pieces in. We have to find a pair. So um, you have to find a pair that matches. And so um, the way that this works is, um, I'm going to go back up here to this diagram. A side and its angle match each other when they're across from each other. So side, um, side and its angle live across from each other. So for example, um, angle B matches side B. Um, angle A matches side A. And then um, angle C, I drew my right triangle there. Um, mm -hmm orange angle C matches with side C so they live across from each other and so what we need to do is find a pair that we have both pieces of like for example I need to know angle A and side A so that I can plug one into the proportion over here so let's see in our triangle example here do we know a pair well 91 goes with little t nope 49 goes with little r nope we don't know both 20 goes with 40 oh sweet okay so here's the pair that I know so this is the known pair. So we're gonna use these ones as our first proportion. Now, your triangle isn't always labeled A, B, and C. It can be any letters. Um, this is just a proportion with the three sides. So our first proportion to solve for something is going to be, we can always use sine, and the angle is 40, over side length 20. So we're always gonna be able to use that if we need to. Now, what do we need to solve for? We need to solve for R and T. So um, pick one first, doesn't matter, let's solve for R first. So I have to set one known proportion equal to the other one with the missing side. So if I'm solving for R, using R next, I know the angle, I don't know the side, so I know it's gonna be sine 49 over R. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna solve for R. So we have a bunch of known stuff and one unknown, and we're gonna find the length of r. So to do that, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simplify this. So go to your calculator. So first of all, I have a fancy one. If you're using your phone, um, it's usually in degree mode, but remember, um, you have to check the mode. On mine, it's fancy. So the modes here are radian or degree. For this unit, we need to be in degrees. So far this year, we've been in radians this whole time, um, using the unit circle, um, but we need to be in degree when we're using um, 
we're using our calculators right now because we're we're using degrees instead of radians. We're back to degrees, 40 degrees, 49 degrees. So if you're using your phone, <clears throat> make sure in like the top left corner it says DEG instead of RAD. Like in the there'll be like little white letters that say DEG or RAD. Make sure you're in DEG. <laughs> Or if you're using Desmos, Desmos comes automatically. Like if you open up Desmos Scientific, it automatically opens in degree mode. So just make sure, like if you're getting all the wrong answers, but you're doing the right work, just make sure that you're in the right mode because that happens more often than you'd think. So go to your calculator and simplify this. Do sine 40, sine 40 divided by 20. All right, so in our class this year, we're gonna round to three decimal places. So 0 0.32. So 0 0.32, oh, 0 0.032 equals, we have sine 49 over r. Well, let's simplify sine 49. Sine is 0 0.755 over r. So the problem right now is r is in the denominator. So I'm going to move it. So I'm going to multiply both sides by r. So it goes away over here and we pick it up over here. So 0 0.032r equals 0.755. And our last step to get r by itself is divide both sides by 0 0.032. So this cancels. So r equals 0.755 divided by 0 0.032. 23.594. So that's this side length. So R is 23.594. And then our last step is we have to find this missing side length. So to do that, we're going to set up another proportion. So I'm going to set up, I'm going to use the sine 40 over 20 again, because that's an easy known one. There's not crazy decimals. We also now know that this one is 49 and 23.594, but that's kind of messy, right? Like I don't want to keep typing in 23.594. So to find our last missing side length, I'm going to use this pair, 91 and T. But for our known one, I'm going to keep using sine 40 over 20. Plus, we already found out the decimal. So in our last side length, so this side is solving for R. Now let's solve for T. Sine 40 over 20 equals sine, we know it's 91 over T. So we just did this, and we just found out that sine 40 over 20 is 0 0.032 equals, and then let's find sine of 91, 0.99, we'll just do 0.999. Um, it's over t, but I don't like t being on the bottom, so same thing, multiply both sides by t, get it up here. So 0 0.032 t equals 0.999, and divide both sides by 0 0.032. T equals 0.999 divided by 0 0.032, 31.219. And so T here is 31.219. All right, so we just solved for all the missing sides and angles of this triangle, and it's non right. All right, so. We know the three angles, we know the three side lengths, and we're good. And so that's what we're doing this week. Um, <clears throat> believe it or not, this is a level two problem. Um, the level three problems are gonna be on the next page, the, the word problems. Um, so this is the this is the case one where you're given two angles and one side. Um, this next example is, is a case two, where you're given one angle and two sides. So if you're given two angles, it's pretty easy to just find the other missing ones. But if we have two missing angles, um, we can't find that last one. So uh, this one's gonna be a little bit more work. I'm gonna draw a box around this stuff. So we've got P. Um, P here matches 30 feet. R matches 13 feet. And then Q, this would be a little Q. A little Q here. We don't know the angle or the side length for Q. Um, but the first thing we need to is identify a pair where we know both the pieces. And in that case, it would be P. So right off the bat, we know sine of 110 over 30 is going to work for our known stuff. 
So the next step, so checking the steps, you know, we've got one angle, two sides, identify your pair, find a missing angle. Well, that's the, re the reason why we have to do that next is because um, we know a side length and this matches with R. So next up we can find this because that gives us one missing piece. So sine R over 13. So we're gonna be able to find angle R. So first up, go to your calculator, simplify. Sine 110 divided by 30 is 0 0.031 equals sine R over 13. So in this case, the unknown is in the top, which is a little bit more helpful. We don't have to move that over. So we're trying to get R by itself. So next up, I'm gonna multiply both sides by 13. 31 times 13 is 0.403. So 0.403 equals sine capital R. Now our last step is to get R by itself. So we have to get rid of sine. And I've talked about this a handful of times. Um, remember, to get rid of sine, the opposite of sine is taking a sine inverse of both sides. To get rid of sine, you have to do the sine inverse. Those cancel each other out. So then on your calculator, you have to find the sine inverse button, or in Desmos, it's under the functions. Here's your sine button, right? And in the blue above it, it says sine negative 1. That's your sine inverse button. So I hit second sine inverse of 0.403 is... 23.767 rounded. So angle R is 23.767. So this angle is 23.767 degrees. Now that we know two of the angles, we can find angle Q. So angle Q would be 180 minus 110 minus what we just found, 23.767. So Q would be 180 minus the two knowns, 110 minus we just found 23.767. So angle Q is 46.233 degrees. So we're almost done. I know all three angles, Q is 46 point whatever, P is 110, R is 23.7. In terms of side lengths, side length R is 13, side length P is 30. The last thing we have to do is find side length Q. So once again, I'm going to use that OG pair. This was our first pair that we knew, so I'm going to use that pair. Um, I'll do it over here, so solve for a little Q right here. Let's do sine 110 over 30 equals, in this case, sine of angle Q, which is... 46.233 over a little q. So we already know sine 110 over 30. We did that earlier and it was 0 0.031 equals, and then let's find the sine of, was it 46? Nope. Sine of 46.233. That is 0 0.722. 0 0.722 over q. Q's in the denominator, nobody likes that, so let's move it over and multiply both sides by Q. My Q's are not good. So 0 0.031 Q equals 0.722. Last step, divide. So Q equals 0.722 divided by 0 0.031. 23.29. And so that's this side, 23.29. All right, so these are your two types of level two questions. These are the two cases. This is the case where you have two angles and one side given. This is the case where you have one angle and two sides given. So we can use law of signs in both ways. Um, there's just different stuff that has to happen first. Now I think this problem where we're solving for angles, um, when we have to solve for an angle, it's a little bit harder because you guys have to pull out sine inverse. And I think it's been a little while since you've talked about sine inverse. We talked about it a little bit when we learned unit circle the first time. Um, but just remember, to get rid of sine, you don't divide by sine. You have to take the sine inverse of both sides. All right, so if you would like, um, pause the video here and try these two problems. Um, this one is like the first case up here. This one is like the case up here. Why don't you guys pause for a second and try these two following, you know, what I did above and see how it goes. 
All right. So this is the case. You know, you've got two sides. I'm going to... Mm -hmm. I don't have enough room. Uh, we've got two angles and one side. So this is um, this is the typical, it's a little bit easier case. Two angles, one side. So the first thing that we should do is um, find that third angle because it's nice and easy. So angle D would be 180 minus 141 minus 23. So 180 minus 141 minus 23 is 16. So angle D here is 16 degrees. Great, so now all we have to do is find F and E. So let's find a pair that we bow know, know both things for. Well, E, we know the angle but not little e. F, we know the angle but not little f. Um, D, great, we know the angle and the side, so this is our pair. So D is the pair of stuff that we know. So we're going to use sine 16 over 9 to solve for stuff. And then you can solve for F or E first, doesn't matter. Let's solve for F first. So F23 uh, matches the little side, or the side for little f. So it'll be sine 23 over f. So go to your calculator, simplify sine 16 divided by 9, 0 0.031, 0 0.031 equals, and then let's do sine of 23, 0.391. 0.391 over a little f. f is on the bottom. Nobody likes that. Let's move it on up. 0.031 f equals 0.391. Divide both sides. f equals 0.391 divided by 0 0.031. 12.613. So that's this side, 12.613. And then the last step, so this was solve for F. Our last step is let's solve for E. So use that known ratio again, sine 16 over nine. This is my angle mark, by the way. That looks like it's supposed to be a part of that. <laughs> Equals. Now we're trying to find E, so we know the angle, sine 141 over little e. So we know sine 16 over 9 is 0 0.031, which equals, and let's find sine of 141, 0.629 over E. But we don't like having E in the bottom, so let's move it up. 0 0.031 E equals 0 0.629, divide. E equals 0.629 divided by 0 0.031, which is 20.29. So that's E. So now we have all three angles and all three sides, and we are good to go. All right, one more level two question. <clears throat> Um, so we have one angle and two sides. So this is little e. So we have two out of the three sides. We know little d and little f. We don't know little e. In terms of angles, we know d. We don't know e and we don't know f. So the first thing, um, we have to find the pair. So our pair in this case, um, we know angle d and side d. So this is our known pair. So we're going to use that for our ratio. So sine 35 over 9 equals, and then we have to figure out which side we also know something about. We know 5 centimeters, so that means um, opposite 5 centimeters is F. So we're going to solve for F first. Sine of angle F over 5. So let's simplify. Sine 35 divided by 9, 0. 0.0. 6, 4 equals sine f over 5. So we're trying to get f by itself. So up next, I'm going to multiply both sides by 5. So 0 0.064 times 5 is 0 0.32 equals sine f. <coughs> and then last step to get rid of sine, you take the sine inverse on both sides. So then the sine inverse of 0 0.32 
is 18.663 is angle F degrees. So angle F up here is 18.663 degrees. So reflecting now, we know angle F and angle D. We know side D and side F. So we need to find angle E and side E. Well, we can't find side E until we know angle E because um, we know two out of three angles. So to find angle E, angle E would be 180 minus 35 minus 18.663, which is 180 minus 35 minus 18.663. 126.337. So angle E is 126.337 degrees. Great. So then last step, so we know all three angles. Last step is finding little side E. So use our ratio that we used first. That's our easy known one, sine 35 over 9 equals sine of 126.337 over little e, because we don't know the side. So we know sine 35 over nine is 0 0.064 from our last part. But then we need to find sine of 126.337. 0 0.806 over e. We don't like e on the bottom. Multiply both sides by e. So, 0.064e equals 0 0.806. Divide both sides by 0 0.064. E equals 0 0.806 divided by 0 0.064 is 12.594. So that would be that side. I don't want to keep drawing arrows because it looks messy. But so now we have all three sides and all three angles. Um, and so this is how we use a lot of signs to find all missing sides and missing angles. So um, there's really usually um, like two or three parts per question, you know. Um, you have to find, uh, well, I guess there's always three parts, right? There's, there's three angles and three sides, and they always give you some combination of three. You either have two sides and one angle or two angles and one side. And so there's always three missing pieces of information. So there's really three parts to every single problem. All right. So these are the level two questions, solving the triangles. Let's take a look at some level three questions. So level three questions are going to be the same thing, except you have to come up with the triangle. It's going to be an application problem. So um, John wants to measure the height of a tree. He walks exactly 100 feet from the base of the tree, so I'm going to underline important information. So he wants to know the height of the tree. So that's our question, what's the height of the tree? He walks 100 feet from the base of the tree. The angle to the ground to the top of the tree is 33 degrees. Tree grows at an angle of 83 degrees with respect to the ground towards John rather than vertically. So how tall is the tree? All right, well, let's try drawing ourselves a picture. Here's our dude. And he walks 100 feet from the base of the tree. Now, the tree grows at a weird angle, so it grows like awkwardly sideways towards him and so they're saying that the tree angle is 83 degrees um, and then the angle at John's feet from the ground to the top of the tree is 33 degrees and the distance between John and the tree is 100 feet so this is the case where we know two angles and one side <clears throat> now we don't actually have to solve all the information here um we specifically want to know how tall is the tree so we want to know this side i'll put an x there all we need to know is to solve for that side the problem is um we need to find a pair to use law of sines so 100 feet goes with this angle okay well we don't know that angle so we can't use that 83 degrees goes with that side well, we don't know that side 33 degrees goes with our unknown side that doesn't help us so right now it looks like we don't have a pair but the thing is, is we know two out of the three angles, and our first step when we know two angles is find the third angle. So let's find the third angle. So this angle 
is going to be 180 minus 33 minus 83, which is 64 degrees. So this angle is 64 degrees. So now we have a pair. We know that this side and this angle go together, so we can do sine of 64 over 100 equals, and then um, we want to know this side. And the angle across from it is 33, so sine 33 over x. So always label your unknown side with x. That's very helpful. That's my, uh, that's my advice. Because you're going to have to put something here, right? And so it helps to put x, or you can label a, or whatever label you'd like. So let's simplify. Sine of 64 divided by 100 is 0 0.00. .00 9 equals sine 33.545 over x. We don't like having x on the bottom, so I'm going to move it up. 0.009x equals 0.545. Divide both sides by 0.009x equals 0.545 divided by 0.009. So it is 60.5. 60.556. And then check your units. Um, he was 100 feet, so the problem's in feet. So that means the tree is 60.556 feet tall. And this is your final answer. So remember, you don't have to end up solving all the sides. You just solve for the one that you care about. But to solve for the missing side, we had to find the missing angle. All right. So let's try another one. You're on a hill and you can see two buildings in the distance. So here's you. Sweet. And you can see two buildings in the distance, building A and building B. The buildings are six miles apart. You're 3.2 miles from building B. The angle between the lines of sight to buildings A and B is 32 degrees. How far away are you from building A? So let's draw some buildings. So um, I'm going to make dots. So here's you. You are 3.2 miles away. So I'll call this building A, building B. You are 3.2 miles away from building B. The buildings themselves are 6 miles apart. And then the angle between your lines of sights, so if you're looking at A versus if you're looking at B, the angle between those is 32 degrees. All right. Obviously, my diagram is not to scale, but here's your triangle. Um, <clears throat> so this is the case where we have two sides and one angle. And specifically, they want to figure out how far away are you from building A. So this is the side that we care about. All right. Well... Um, if we have uh, only one angle, that means we need to solve for another angle. So find your pair. Um, the pair of information you know about, you know these two pieces. Those two are across from each other, so we know a pair. So first up, we know sine of 32 over 6. Um, but the problem is, is you want to know this distance, um, but you don't know the angle here. So we actually can't use that to solve yet. So instead we have to solve for this missing angle. And once we know that missing angle, we can solve for this side length using that angle. So the only other piece of information we know is a 3.2, which matches with this angle. So unfortunately, we have to find A first. So it's a little bit more work. So let's simplify. Sine 32 divided by 6 is 0.088 equals sine a over 3.2. Trying to get a by itself, so multiply both sides by 3.2. So 0 0.088 times 3.2 is 0.2816 equals sine a. To get a by itself, take the sine inverse of both sides. So sine inverse of 0.2816. So angle A is 16.356 degrees. So this angle is 16.356 degrees. 
All right, so now what we can do is find angle B here. So that way we can solve for the side that's across from it. So to find angle B, it's 180 minus 32 minus 16.356. which is 131, so angle B is 131.644 degrees. So angle B here, 131.644 degrees. And now that we know angle B, we can finally solve for the side that's across from it. So I'm gonna stick with my original proportion. So we've got sine 32 over six equals sine 131.644. Over x. Finally, we get to start finding the side we care about. So we know sine 32 over 6 is 0 0.088 equals, and then now let's find sine of 131.644.747 over x, but we don't like x being on the bottom. Move it over. 0.088x equals 0.747. Divide both sides by 0 0.88. So x equals 0.747 divided by 0 0.088. 8.489. So you are 8.489 units is miles. Miles. So you are 8.489 miles away from building A. So for this application problem, we actually did end up solving every angle and every side. It just so happened that um, we needed to do that so that we could find that piece of information that we wanted to know about. All right, so this is a lot of signs. Um, if you guys have questions, let me know. Um, Ask me questions in class or come to the question time on Thursday and hopefully this goes well.